with news you can use. Today's news is uh, deals with the GSEs, the government supported or government sponsored entities of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the, the two largest conforming home loan lenders in the United States. Uh, their, their numbers have finally come in for 2021 and they basically have doubled their profit <clears throat> from the previous year, uh, which was a slightly down year, but not a significantly down year compared to, the, to 2019. So um, what that means is that they're getting a larger share of the mortgage market. Now, Fannie and Freddie have about 70 plus percent of all the conforming loans, but the majority of the market is what's called non-conforming loans. So think Bank of America writing loans for their own account, not writing them for the account of the government. The way that this thing works is <clears throat> the GSEs will guarantee that a payment will be made uh, if Bank of America, say, for example, underwrites a loan, they're going to give about and puts up their money to do it. They're going to give 85 cents on the dollar back to um, uh, Bank of America to relend, and then 15 percent will be on Bank of America's dime. In other words, they're collecting 15% and the GSE gets 85%. Now that the amount, the importance of Fannie and Freddie is essentially for first time home buyers and for people who have less than perfect credit scores. Uh, the fact that they're doubling uh, in 2021 of first time home buyer share of their market is telling. What it means <clears throat> is that uh, historically, people go to these GSE-backed loans, the Fannie and Freddie type loans, when they have either low credit scores or lower down payment. Those are the two things that they specialize in. Um, and the fact that their market share for that segment <clears throat> with first-time home buyers doubled last year is very telling. And so what it means is there's a lot of first-time home buyers out there swarming the marketplace. It also means that uh, the, the GSEs will take more risk, more riskier borrowers. So it means there's more borrowers that, that are brand new to the marketplace, in other words, first time home buyers, and they are of a riskier content. Now, the year before, <clears throat> the average Fannie and Freddie buyer borrower had a 740 credit score, which was extremely high. In the trough in 2008 and 9, I think the average was around 580 to 600. So they were taking anybody who could breathe and giving them loans. So the quality sunk in 2021, but it's not down to the level that it was in 2008, 9, and 10. The, the bottom line is that Freddie and Fannie see a trending down in a number of markets that mainstream lenders won't or can't loan in anymore. So they, they saw a big uptick in certain levels, about a third of the country, where they said the market was either flat last year or actually dropped. And as of this year, you're seeing more and more of that stuff coming on the market as well. So uh, keep in mind that we've talked about this in the past, that some markets this year will be going up. Generally, the whole market, we believe, will be going up till maybe June, July. And then most markets will start tailing off in terms of prices. Of course, where there's demand, um, you know, a, a huge demand on things, <clears throat> that you're always going to see prices go up. So Demand would be for an area that everybody wants to live in and there's no more space to build more homes. Um, so those types of areas, or uh, as we talked about last week, you see a lot of people flooding out. They're, they're moving for other reasons now. So California is a, you know, they don't call us the left coast for nothing. Uh, we're a fairly liberal state, a highly blue state. People are moving out uh, and they want to get into red states, you know, the folks that that's their thing. Um, and so you're going to see that kind of migration. When people make those kinds of changes, it uh, it creates a demand in the places they move to. So two years ago, Idaho, last year, Utah, this year, Tennessee, that's where a lot of Californians are moving. Also, Florida, Texas, Iowa, Arkansas, they're, you know, moving into uh, red states. So in those states, in some areas, there'll be an excess demand over supply, and you will see prices spike as a result of that. <clears throat> the other areas where people, you know, want to have a home, don't want to leave, a lot of this now are the first-time home buyers, which is generally the millennials um, as a group, they are going to the government to borrow money, the GSEs to, to borrow money. 
Um, now, fortunately, the government is making money on this thing and eventually may release uh, the GSEs from their government stewardship or oversight that, that they've had. Um, they've had that since I think around 2009 or 10. Um, maybe it was eight, actually, when the, the government took over the ownership and basically nationalized those two lenders. I expect that sometime in the next several years, you're going to see those guys go back onto the open marketplace because they're extremely profitable. They made something like $29 billion last year in profit. Um, it would make a great IPO and could get the government all their money that they put into this thing back. So expect to see that happen as well. All right, that's the news you can use for today.